ECNM Asks is a video series that enlists the technical expertise of our brand's subject matter experts to answer our readers' most pressing electrical questions. Posted twice per month, these quick videos present Q&As on topics related to various installations, applications, and troubleshooting scenarios. When our readers ask, ECNM answers. Here's Ron Witta with Shermco Industries, who is also a member of NIDA's Standards Review Council. Thank you and welcome to this edition of ECNM Ask. I'm Ron Whittup with Sherm Co. Industries. And in fact, I'm here at Group CBS in Gainesville, Texas. They're allowing us to use their facility and highlight some of the things we're going to show about today's question on medium voltage circuit breakers. And you're also going to see some footage from the field. So without further ado, let's get going. Here's today's question, and it comes from Todd from Pittsburgh. Since we have several medium voltage circuit breakers in our facility, what maintenance should we perform to get the most reliability from our breakers? Well, Todd from Pittsburgh, that's a great question. And since UN's from Steeler Country, we've got the exact answer. And it's actually a pretty simple one. The answer is the Dallas Cowboys. And Dallas, your Cowboys are world champions again. All right, Todd, so two of your rings did come at the expense of the Cowboys, but hey, we're in Texas, and so, you know, we got to try. It's been 20 whatever years, so to answer your question, it's actually this. It depends, but we're going to get into that. But first, let's talk about something that's very, very important, and that's the safety aspect of all of this. So none of the information we're about to present will address the most important aspect of medium voltage circuit breaker maintenance or reliability, which is safety. The assumption is that all the proper safety procedures, processes, isolation, and mitigation have been performed by qualified electrical workers. This is super important because, uh, hey, remember kids, electricity will kill you. So Todd, back to that answer on all things electrical and it depends. It's gonna depend on the overall condition of the equipment, the reliability requirement, the environment it's in, and many, many other factors. So be aware, you need to look at the specifics in your facility and follow industry best practices to hone in on exactly what needs to be done. Since we only have a few minutes here today, we'll hit the high points of the most common aspects of field inspection and testing, and we'll suggest a normal set of conditions that would be found in just about every industrial facility. So let's make some basic assumptions. The equipment is in decent shape, or it might even be fairly new. If it has some service age to it, there's been some level of maintenance performed through the years. The equipment type is either medium voltage air or medium voltage vacuum circuit breakers. The equipment can be de-energized and taken out of service for these maintenance tasks. So it comes down to this, I see Todd. Inspect, clean, test, operate, document. Again, or as we see it, I see Todd. Okay, Todd, uh, all right, I just made that up. But, uh, but you know, really it's not that bad of an acronym, but, but really there's three places we need to go. First, you need to go to the manufacturer's recommendations. You know, the manufacturers will typically give you some guidance, but it's far from comprehensive. Second, you have NFPA 70B for the Electrical Maintenance Program, or EMP. The 70B will help you make decisions on your overall maintenance program and provide you guidance on how to do things. And third, you have the NIDA Maintenance Testing Specification, MTS 2023, for exactly what to do. But the real key to specific tests, including visual, mechanical, electrical, and importantly, the expected results, will come from the NIDA Maintenance Testing Specifications, and in this case, Section 7.6. So we've got these three elements of industry best practices, and we're honing in on the best thing for you to do for your circuit breakers. So let's go back to I see Todd. First up we have inspect. Visual and mechanical inspections are really important, especially with medium voltage equipment. Tracking, contamination, dried or hardened grease, slow operation, squeaking, these can all be problematic. And the best resource for identifying these issues, the qualified electrical worker. You know, NIDA will provide you a list of all these things you should do, what you should inspect, but it's up to you to put somebody on the task that actually knows what they're doing. Next up, we have clean. Another one of the most important things you can do to ensure reliability, make sure that it's clean 
inside and out. You know, as qualified electrical workers, we're some of the highest paid janitors on the planet, and it's something we can be proud of. Because it takes that experience to identify those things that make a difference, and it's so important when you're talking about medium voltage equipment. I can't tell you how many times we found points of failure or misoperation because a piece of medium voltage equipment, especially circuit breakers, were not clean or cleaned properly. Next up, test. NEDA maintenance specifications provide you with great guidance for testing requirements for both air and vacuum circuit breakers. Refer to section 7.6.1.3 for medium voltage air breakers out of the ANSI standard, the NEDA 2023 Maintenance Testing Specification, or MTS, and 7.6.3 for medium voltage vacuum circuit breakers. So let's take a look at section 7.6.1.3 First, Category A, Visual and Mechanical Inspection. Section B is the Electrical Tests. Section C, we have Test Values, Visual and Mechanical. And Section D, we have Test Values, Electrical. I want to point out also, some of the tests have asterisks by them. Those are classified as optional tests. You know, as you can see, there's just a ton of information, a ton of steps here. And so we can't cover all that in the time we have here today. But what I will do, let's show a few examples, some of the things we saw here at Group CBS here in the shop, and a few things that we found out in the field. Next up, operate. An important part of testing and maintenance is actually operating the equipment. And operational tasks are embedded in the visual, mechanical, and electrical testing portions of the NEDA specifications as well as the manufacturer's instructions. You know, rack the breaker in, rack the breaker out. Check the smoothness of the shutter operation. Check truck operated and mechanism operated contacts. Test the tripping operation from protective relays. Charge, close, and trip the breaker in the test position. These are just but a few of the very important operational tests that you can perform. You do this while the breaker is off and out of service and look at it very closely because it's really important. And finally, D for document. If you didn't document it, it didn't happen. Okay, so maybe it did happen, but your boss is gonna be much happier when he can justify that maintenance dollar spend to others, you know, the boss's boss, and when you can clearly show what we did to improve safety, improve reliability, and this all happens through the quality of our documentation. And for best practices guidance, refer to section 5.4 of the NEDA testing specifications. It will provide a roadmap for your documentation journey, so don't lose sight of this one. Okay, Todd, that's about it. That's about all the time we have for today. But to get back to the original question and the original answer, which was, I said, it depends. Hopefully you've seen here today is you've got three great industry resources to hone in on, and that's the manufacturer's recommendation, NFPA 70B, and importantly, those NEDA testing specifications is gonna tell you exactly what to do on that medium voltage breaker. Take a look at your facility, make some decisions, apply those NEDA testing specs, and we'll see you in the Super Bowl. ECNM Asks is a production of ECNM Magazine, a part of the portfolio of Endeavor Business Media Publications. Tune back in for our next episode coming soon to the members only portal.